Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and it's cast time once again. And, um, I definitely need to preface this by saying, um, there might be some things that, that are gonna go wrong on this. Um, some of this cast was put together right after I did my, uh, after I did my daily pinball stream. So, I didn't really have time to look it over or anything like that, but like I said, um, I put some of the components of this together, like, right away. So I don't, I don't really remember, remember what I had on here. So, so, but most of the time, usually whenever I put these cast videos together, they're oftentimes done at the spur of the moment. Like, I put it all together and then start it right after. But this time around, I put a good chunk of it together, like, again, way earlier. So this is, uh, I'm not used to doing it like this. So, like I said, um, I it might be, you know, throughout the cast, I might be, what the hell did I... What the hell was I thinking? You know, that kind of thing. So, but I'm going to go ahead and intro this real quick. This is going to be Goryeo, a uh, story of Yama Uba. And I, I think this stuff here is classified as Japanese dungeon synth. But um, does it really doesn't sound very dungeony. It doesn't sound very synthy. So I, I'll probably just go ahead and say close enough, but whatever. Um. I actually, uh, I actually got picked up, I actually got this album, like, a few days ago. Um, I checked it, it's free to use, so, like I said, I've had it, I had it on my computer for a few days now, and, um, just looking for something else to play, but, um, I did try looking into some more Indian, fl Indian flute music, you know, I'm um, playing that, uh, World of Warcraft torn music, which sounded really cool. So I was looking for more of the same, but unfortunately, um, it was all copyrighted. Uh, copyrighted, and then the stuff that actually wasn't copyrighted, which is probably one uh, one video that I can think of, it it actually sounded like the kind of music I hear at supermarkets. You know, music. See, it just... It, it didn't sound very Indian-y. And in fact, in fact, there was... Um, there was actually um, the Sounds of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, there's an Indian flute version of that. Lord knows what else is out there. Like maybe Just the Way You Are by Billy Joel. Maybe there's an Indian flute version of that. You know, maybe Do You Really Want to Hurt Me by Culture Club. <laughs> maybe there's an Indian flute version of that one too. How about? In fact, real quick. Real quick, let me go ahead and look that up. Let me see if they actually have. Okay, I'm going to type it down. Ameri Native American flute. I want it that way. Backstreet Boys. Let's see if they have it. Well, they got the sheet music for it. Holy shit, they actually do. I ain't gonna play it. No, I'm most certainly not gonna play it, but here, hold on just a moment. Let me do this. I got a fair amount to do, man, so sorry to sorry to go off on this tangent, but yeah, I kind of feel the need to do this. Yeah, they actually have it. It's a YouTube video. I want it that way by the Backstreet Boys on... I don't... Um, it's not an, It's not a Native American flute, but... It's an Indian flute, yeah. So... So, but anyway... Kind of getting back to... Kind of getting back to what I was originally talking about. I was originally wanting to add, have some more Indian flute music... I couldn't really find any, so I had to kind of search in the couch cushions, and I found this. This is an album that I haven't played yet, so, so let me go ahead and fire up. Uh, 
And I did forget to sound test this. Damn it. So. For my daily pinball session, I should not have bothered. Yeah, that it, this was a total waste. Um, they had the heat turned off in my apartment, so if not for the electric blanket, I, I probably would have been a little bit on the shivering side. It was uh, it was around 60, 65 degrees in my apartment. Um, otherwise, when I woke up, um, not to mention. Yeah, I think I had a full seven, eight hours of sleep, but unfortunately, most if not all of it was dreaming nightmare filled, so woke up feeling like shit. So I, and then on top of it, the stream was freaking dead as a doornail because apparently there was a there was a pinball tournament in Oklahoma City that they decided to go ahead and live stream my Twitch. So yeah, every, so everybody else is over there watching that and you know, not watch you know, not over on my channel watching mine. It was probably uh, it was probably the deadest stream I've ever been on in a long time, or ever since I streamed in pinball. Usually the joints, usually the joints jumping. I mean, oh, oh excuse me, but yeah, then none none of my regulars are on, so I was basically playing to nobody. It's almost a throwback to back when I used to stream uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. totally freaking empty so what I might end up doing I think this tournament is supposed to go on for like a couple days or two or three days um I think before I stream I'll check and make sure if this tournament's still gonna be running um if it is then I'll I might whisper like one of my um one of my regulars, if he's, um, if he's not, if he's, if he's not going to be on, or if he's not going to be around to be on my stream, then I probably just won't stream at all, because I don't, I don't want this to be a waste of effort, but, um, if they are going to be on, then yeah, I'll go ahead and stream for him, so, but like I said, it looks like, um, but again, it looks like there's a, there's a big tournament going on. You're streaming it on Twitch, so my my audience is gonna be over checking that out and not checking me out. So that's so that's gonna that's gonna make my stream pretty much pointless. So so tomorrow's probably gonna be a judgment call on whether or not I'll actually show up. Uh, but otherwise, for the for the stream itself, it actually went pretty good. I think um I think I took a few uh. I took a few first place finishes. Um, and uh, I ranked pretty high in all the other ones that I did. So it was a pretty good time at FX3. Uh, Pinball Arcade, it went it went okay. But I was only on maybe, I want to say about half an hour. And by that time, since nobody was on, nobody was, on, nobody was talking. Um, and plus... Since fatigue was already starting to get its hold on me, and plus uh, the fact that uh, I'm having a stream while wearing a hoodie, jogging pants, and long johns. Yeah, silly as it might sound, despite the fact that uh, despite the fact that it was it was only quote unquote around 65, 70 degrees in my apartment, I was still wearing long johns anyway. Cause fuck it, why not? So you know, because of me wearing all that, I just went ahead just 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 that bucket and killed the stream. So because only on for about an hour and a half and just called it off. Ah, here's what I did wrong. But um, anyway, 
Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. But um Saturday? Saturday is my uh my weekly workout. Well, I'm kinda kinda messed things up here. Um I did a I was doing my uh, neck and chest neck yeah, neck and chest workouts. Um, but this time around, I decided to go ahead and push myself a little more. Just tired of doing like, doing like just 10 reps or, you know, going into a, going to a certain stretch, for lack of a better word, for like 10 seconds. And just decided to go ahead and, go ahead and do them until I couldn't do them anymore, anymore until basically failure. So, but. Yeah, I just forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, I ended up uh ended up just royally fucking up my back. Um especially on the chest exercise, I maybe I'm doing it wrong, but for some reason my uh my rhomboid muscle is like it's in it's in your upper back in between your shoulder blades. Apparently I decided to come along for the ride. But but uh, after I got through I got through after I got through those exercises Oh my god, it freaking hurt like hell. Yeah, fuck that up big time. So, and it, this is the kind of pain that ibuprofen doesn't really help out much in, so I know it was a pretty severe injury. And um, I've heard this before over the years, just, you know, heavy lifting, you know, all the jobs at work, just constantly pulling and yanking, you know, hard yanking, like, trying to pull pallets or pulling carts or pulling cases or pulling pulling stuff out of shelves and all, all that kind of stuff but again you know short version a whole lot of yanking over the years it just really put a strain on my rhomboid muscles so it's one of those things that uh caused me it's caused me to become slow in my old age that's one of the reasons why because I'm trying to avoid injuring this muscle again Hopefully, hopefully my, um, hopefully my back will be all healed up by the time my work week starts next week. Or I should say this week. I think it's Monday morning. But, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but one other thing. Whoops. And mistake number one. Like I said, most of this cast was put together like right after I ended my stream. So I didn't really have time to proofread, for lack of a better word, this this cat these uh elements. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna take another drink. Found this article by Jessica Wildfire. Um, I haven't read it, so so I guess we'll just go ahead and we'll go ahead and read it together. But like usual, I'll just highlight various parts of the article and do commentary on it. Um, Joe Rogan, he this is a program I used to watch from time to time. Um, in fact, uh, some of I actually downloaded some of his videos. Figured they'd be uh, good stuff to watch while uh, while my internet's out for like maintenance or whatever. And most people have a very low opinion on him. And I I'll probably be saying this again from time to time, but it's it's what happens when somebody has the uh, infinite funds cheat, or when they're so filthy staking rich that price is no object for them. It's just they start they start doing stupid shit come up with, you know, crazy crackpot ideas that it, that only work in theory, but in practice, eh, nope. So. Americans equate wealth with moral virtue and physical perfection. Uh, I could see it. 
groups that are eager to make heroes and idols. They latch on to anyone with money and power and listen to their lives. Not me. Not me. What are the things I was... One of the things I was taught, it might have been one of Asop's fables, but what is not everything that glitters is gold. But it I'm sure I was I was taught I was taught of various other lessons or variations on that theme, but yeah, it But at the same time I'm also with David Lee Roth as well. Um whoever said money can't buy happiness didn't know where to go shopping. So I kind of believe that as well, but... Yeah, because... Because they're broke. And, you know, inflation. You know, cost of living's going up, but the, uh, the wages we're getting aren't. So... So, yeah, I think the, uh, the key word is desperately. Like I said, people, I think people in general are living on fumes now. So, you know, please stay with your family. Most of their time dreaming about reaching a social or economic status that lets them get away with anything. They call it fuck you money. <laughs> Hey, it just hit me. Hang on just a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I just thought of this. Maybe that's why the maybe that's why the all that Indian flute music that I was looking well, that I was looking into was all copyrighted music. You know, they're wanting their videos monetized. You know, they're, you know they're trying to they're trying to make their they're trying to. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to profit off their music and stuff. Maybe that's what they're going after. The fuck you money. I just thought, uh, yeah. Huh. Monetizing and monetizing Native American music. So, I guess when casinos aren't enough. Yep. In fact, one of the channels that I don't I don't watch anymore, uh, Second Thought. Um, I think it was, I think it was a very 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 first video that he did. It was um, it was about uh, Mother Teresa. She's actually pretty corrupt. Like yeah, she's you know, she puts puts up the whole holy pious frugal persona. But in actuality, she was making like backroom deals and stuff, trying to make more money, trying to make more money for her church and all that. So we're at the point now where super rich white guys with private jets can say and do whatever they want. Yup. Yup. Yep, misunderstood geniuses. Oh, damn. He's a pretty... Jordan Peterson? I've only seen a little bit of his footage, but yeah, he... I can see how he's such a polarizing person. I mean, but like I said, I don't... I only seen, like, little bits and pieces of him. Um, it seems like an okay guy to listen to, but not somebody that I'd want to... I'd want to sit out and listen to for long periods. David Brooks, I never heard of him. Praise each other as influential public intellectuals while punching down on punching down on teacher plus size model. Yeah. I mean, if Brooks and Peterson are such intellectuals, coming down on teachers is like shit in their own bed.
the deep root of heroes. A growing number of young American men and potato pine role models in these toxic icons. Acting like them, thinking like them. Worst person and miserable. And, uh, yeah. And again, um, I knew about this a long time ago. Um, those that have seen my other cast videos, um, I wonder if I, I wonder if I still have it on my folder. Hold on just a second. Let me see if I have it. Okay, I probably don't. Hold on. I think I got rid of it. Yeah, I think I got rid of it to make room. Yeah, I ain't got it, so I'll just go ahead. But anyway, um, but yeah, one of my favorite channel channels uh, called Do Not Eat, Do Not Eat 01. But uh, he's he's been pretty critical of Elon Musk's ideas. Um, Do Not Eat. He's a he's a civil engineer. But yeah, he did a he did a whole thing on the loop. On the loop, and he basically just listed all the problems that that were uh, that he had with it. But uh, like I said, I think I did a cast about this a long time ago. But again, it's it's I said it in there, and I'll say it here. It's it's what happens when people are filthy rich, you know, when they have that, when they basically have the infinite fun, the infinite money cheat. It's just they dream up stupid shit. You know, they, they don't they don't take. They don't take money or practicality into consideration. That's exactly what happened with uh, Elon Musk, the loop. So, yeah, I knew about this a long time ago. Let me try this again. I think uh, I saw a video about him. I, I saw a video about him that talked about this like a long time long time ago I only saw it one time so I don't I don't really know I don't remember much about it but yeah he's he has a history of being a douchebag to women and stuff oh here's a new word greenwashing his company in order to win government subsidies okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink better if I highlighted the whole thing that the electric vehicles weren't going to save the planet and that he was greenwashing his company in order to yeah was a misunderstood genius you said his autism explained his behavior those of us with autism knew better doesn't make okay I don't I'm not autistic um Nobody and nobody I can think of is is autistic. Um, I think I have a cousin who's a retard, but that's that's about it. But I like I said, I don't I don't know of any autistic people in my life. But so I'd have to I'd have to defer to her on this. She knows more about it than I do. I'm sure she over the years she's probably taught autistic people. So. Like I said, she probably knows more about this than I do, but yeah, autism doesn't make you an entitled asshole. Verified evidence. Elon pro procured employees so he could treat them like sex objects. 
Huh? He allegedly exposed himself to a flight attendant. What? They paid her rush money? Yeah, I didn't know about this. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you can see the lower left corner, but... But yeah, this... This is the link. Elon Musk, uh, sexual misconduct flight attendant, NPR. So let, let's go check it out. Yeah, Elon Musk denies a report accusing him of sexual misconduct on a SpaceX jet. <laughs> you horny little devil. Imagine being rich and famous enough that you can commit sex crimes and then buy your way out of trouble. Yup. Yup. Seems to be the new American dream. It's what millions of young men are aspiring towards now. It's dangerous. Yup. If a woman acted like Elon Musk, she'd lose custody of her children. No. Oh. James... Oh, the legendary James Brown said it. This is a man's world! So... Told you about... Now, again, I used to watch Joe Rogan a lot. So, but, um, I think right around the time his company got bought by Spotify, I started losing interest. Okay, okay. Now this, now this, I had already known. I had already, pretty much already known ever since uh, first watching Joe Rogan. So, but I'm also one of the the kind of person that I can pretty much uh, separate the wheat from the chaff. Or, you know, I know that uh, kind of kind of hard to explain. But I can kind of, I kind of have a bullshit radar when it comes to stuff like this. I don't. I don't think he's an I don't think he's an outright liar. But uh he does he he has said some ignorant opinions at times, but like I said, he's Yeah, I'll I'll just I'll just leave it at that. I I still have the rest of this article I gotta go through. But yeah, basically he's he's no saint. And um, to be fair, um, to be, or to be honest on this, I don't really wear my mask anymore. But uh, just mostly because uh, mostly because uh, I work the night shift, so I'm I'm out of my day. My day starts like in the evenings when there's not that many people out. So at some point, I just said, "Fuck it," and just not bother wearing it. And plus, uh. And uh, around where I live, they'll say that uh, if uh, if if our if uh, if our county is at high risk status, then yeah, all of us will be required to wear them. But otherwise, no. himself on his own podcast. Uh-oh, we got another link. Uh, watch Joe Rogan Real Lives Real. So, let's see what's on there. Oh, this is a video. Um, pause. Response to COVID misinformation. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna go through the whole uh I'm not gonna watch the video or anything, but watch Joe Rogan realize in real time the story he's writing about is, is actually fake news. Okay. But like I said, I
desperately, okay, desperately trying to find evidence to support a conspiracy theory, theory about Australia banning. He finds out it was all fake, just like the majority of stories he rants about. And I've got another linky here, but this one's from uh, Reuters, Reuters.com. Um, fact check amendments to legislation in Victoria, Australia will not prevent citizens from growing their own food. I'm, uh, I'm reading, I'm reading the, uh, the web address when I'm hovering over these. There are laws in many American cities that restrict what people can grow in their yards. Those laws go back centuries, but you can contest them. It's made over $100 million by doing exactly this, scaring a predominantly male audience from fear mongering about government plots to control them. Okay. None, none, none of this surprises me. Amplifies conspiracies and pushes them into the mainstream discourse. The difference between him and his friend Alex Jones is that he acts so casual about it. He looks so chill. I actually like a guy who's hanging out in his man cave, sipping whiskey and smoking cigars. And I think that was a that was another thing that I killed it for me on the uh, podcast. I think he started smoking cigars more often, so that that kind of killed it. Um, I know uh, Joey Diaz. He's actually a favorite to have on that show, but again, he he's a pot smoker, and they'll often just toke up right then and there. I mean, I'm not anti pot, you know. I'm not anti-cigar per se, but I mean, keep that shit out of the keep that shit out of the podcast. It's kind of a it's kind of an eyesore for me. White American man's attitudes about rugged individualism and self. Okay, um, it seems that I'm only about halfway through this article. So, and so I've already got a little bit over long. This is about, got about 32 minutes in, so, yeah. And this album here was just about to be over anyway, so I'll just go ahead and call it good here. So, but otherwise, uh, thank you everybody for uh, for uh, dropping by. I appreciate that. I always do. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow, so, yeah. Uh, but until then, though, everybody learning working but anyway goodbye everybody and i'll see you all next time bye for now